Shabbat Shalom. For if one comes and preaches another Jesus whom we have not preached, or you receive a different spirit which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you bear this beautifully. This is what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 11, verse 4. Paul is essentially saying that Satan has a clever plan of deception that brings another Jesus, another spirit, and a false gospel. Jeshua is very clear during the Olivet Discourse. The sign of the end times will be a deception. And Jesus answered and said to them, See to it that no one misleads you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am the Christ, and will mislead many. Keep in mind that Jeshua is talking about many here, not a few. Many in Greek is the word polis, translated as many, much or large. So the question now is, who is preaching a different Jesus, a different spirit and a different gospel to this large group of believers? Who is this false church, the bride of the Antichrist? Scripture describes the false church as a harlot, a prostitute or an immoral woman. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. So could it be that Jeshua is talking about the Roman church here? I think it's possible. Roman priests dressed in purple and scarlet, and the Roman Catholic church is rich, decorated with gold. And to this day it is associated with sexual immorality, homosexuality, and child abuse. Before I go any further, I would like to make a clear distinction between the Roman Catholic people and the institution that deceives them. We love people, but we hate deceptive institutions. I am not against Catholics. I don't question the sincerity of any believer. I just struggle and wrestle with things that aren't biblical. And the Bible tells us it's our job to point out error. Paul says, For what business of mine is it to judge outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? And James says, Let him know that the one who has turned a sinner from the error of his way will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. That said, let's point out some of the many Roman church errors, because some, because the list is long. The Roman Catholic Church believes that they are the one true apostolic church founded by Jeshua. They went out from us, but were not really of us. If they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out, so that it would be shown that they are all not of us. John is very clear here. People left the apostolic faith because they had never been born again. If they had been born again, they would have stayed. The Catholic Church submits to a different authority. They believe that the Pope, the, the papacy, is the head of all churches, instead of Jeshua as the head of all ecclesias. The Catholic Church believes that people are saved through infant water baptism, the sprinkling of water, rather than immersion or spirit baptism, rebirth. The Catholic Church believes that Peter was their first Pope, that Peter is the rock. I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. But this is not what Scripture tells us. Peter understood very well that not he, but Jeshua is the rock. This precious value is for you who believe and for those who disbelieve, the stone which the builders rejected. This became the very cornerstone, a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense. They stumble because they are disobedient to the word. To this doom they were also appointed. Paul knew this too, and all drank the same spiritual drink they were drinking from a spiritual rock, which swallowed them in the rock 
was Christ. The rock was Christ. David knew. They remembered that God was their rock and the Most High God, their Redeemer. Jesus is the rock, not Peter. Jeshua is the foundation for his father's truth. Another major mistake is that the Pope carries with him the key that Jeshua gave to Peter. First, Jeshua said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, not key. Second, the key of the kingdom belongs to Jesus, the son of David, and to no one else. He who is holy, who is true, who has the key of David, who opens and no one will shut, and who shuts and no one opens. So where does this key story come from? The story comes from Constantine, who claimed that Saint Peter appeared to him and gave him his key, known as the forgery, the counterfeit of Constantine. The same guy who changed Yahweh's day of rest. Shabbat to Sunday, the day of the sun. And then Constantine passed the key to the Pope, known as the donation of Constantine, where he handed over the key of political authority of Rome to the Pope in Peter's name. Another non-biblical tradition within the Catholic Church is a monstrance, a, a vessel, a container that represents the real presence of Jesus Christ. According to the Catholic teaching, Jesus will take place in the middle of the monstrance. And this container is decorated with the sun, depicted by the sunburst and moon. Which is quite interesting. Because in ancient times, Constantine, the Roman church, worshipped the sun and the moon. People bow to this monstrance, just as they bow to, to Mary and the baby Jesus. Which is not Mary, but Semiramis and Tammuz, whom the Ephesians worshipped. In 1854, the doctrine of the immaculate conception of Mary was introduced into the Catholic Church, that Mary was conceived without sin and lived a sinless life, which is interesting, because if she lived a sinless life like Jeshua, where is she? That's why the Catholic Church came up with a different doctrine. 100 years later, in 1950, Mary's body was taken up into heaven. One lie led to another lie. According to the current Pope Francis, there is no hell. He believes and teaches that all people, even atheists, will reach eternity as long as they are sincere. The Catholic Church worships a different Jesus, who provides conditional life instead of eternal life. A Jesus who grants partial forgiveness instead of full forgiveness. These things I have written to you who believe in the same of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Catholic Church believes in a different gospel. They believe that, that they receive Jesus, the blood and the body, in their stomach, instead of receiving him once in the heart. Paul tells us that there's only one gospel. As we have said before, so I say again now, if any man is preaching to you a gospel contrary to what you received, he is to be accursed. The Catholic Church also has a different view of sin, stating that daily sins do not cause death, but only a punishment for sin, which is Satan's very first lie right in the Garden of Eden. The serpent said to the woman, you surely will not die. Anyway, the list of errors is too long to handle in one session. But the question now is, why am I telling you all this? Because it is no coincidence that the leader of the main denomination, the Catholic Church, which in my opinion is not Christianity, infuses the church doctrine uh, with pagan lingo. Scripture tells us that the last days will be marked uh, by the formation of a one world religion for the cause of peace, which will prepare the way uh, and provide a platform for the Antichrist. The Catholic Church is inclusive and tolerant uh, of other religions. And that's why the Pope is leading all religions 
towards one world religion, rather than being sanctified by the truth. So where does the Bible prophesy about the one world religion? In the book of Revelation. It was also given to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority over every tribe, every people, and tongue, and nation was given to him. This one world religion will not be a peaceful one world, one world religion. It will be enforced. Anyone who refuses to worship will be tortured and killed. There will be one church, one church that comes together to worship the Antichrist. This one world religion is already on stage and being formed before our eyes. We are witnessing a global view that all religions are basically equal. That there are more paths to Yahweh, not just through Jeshua. All religions believe in the same God. And this incredible mistake is also infiltrating our churches. So when will the one world religion arise? The stage is already set. We know who the players are. It's only a matter of time before the one world re religion emerges. Did you know, by the way, that there's already a headquarters for the one world religion? The headquarters of the one world religion was inaugurated in February 16, 2023 to provide a global place of worship. It is called the Abrahamic Family House, funded by the United Arab Emirates and contains a mosque, a church and a synagogue. So why uh, uh, Abrahamic? Because Abraham is considered the first to make a covenant with Yahweh. And Judaism, Islam and Christianity recognize and embrace Abraham as their first prophet. It's not a coincidence that the peace, uh, that the peace agreements already concluded in the Middle East as a precursor to the final peace deal that heralds the, the final seven years are called the Abraham Accords. And Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Yahweh is a jealous father who does not allow interface dialogues. He does not allow what the Pope tells us, that there are several paths to the Father. There's only one path that leads to the Father, and that's Jeshua, not to Rome. If you take the path to Rome, you will end up in Babylon. Pope Francis signed a joint declaration on human fraternity, because he believes that we all worship the same God, which is an open door to compromise. Look warm as Jeshua calls it. So who will lead the one world religion? Satan, the dragon, the Antichrist, the coming world leader and the false prophet. Those who promote the one world religion, those who teach us false doctrines. The Catholic Church, Pope Francis, leads the table of the interfaith world, a world religious community, because ultimately we all believe in the same father, he says. It captures the values shared between Judaism, Christianity and Islam and serves as a powerful platform for inspiring and nurturing understanding and acceptance among people of goodwill. That sounds beautiful, right? Harmonious even. People living together in peace, understanding each other's faith and worshipping together. But is this what the world shows us? Isn't this exactly what Paul warns us about? While they were saying peace and safety, then destruction will come upon them. Suddenly, like labor pains upon a woman with child, and they will not escape. Therefore hear the word of the Lord, O scoffers who rule this people who are in Jerusalem. Because you have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with Sheol we have made a pact. Isaiah is clear, they make a covenant with death with hell, a covenant with the Antichrist. Jeremiah is clear about it. They have healed the brokenness of my people superficially, saying peace, peace, but there is no peace. Ezekiel is clear about it. It's definitely because they have misled my people by saying peace when there is no peace. 
Micah is clear about it. Thus says the Lord concerning the prophets who lead my people astray. When they have something to bite with their teeth, they cry peace. But against him who puts nothing in their mouths, they declare holy war. It all creates a false peace with, which interestingly refers to the last three and a half years. The last three and a half years of the tribulation. It, it's all promoted under the same goal, peace, prosperity and happiness. We see the pieces of the prophecy puzzle fall into, into place, shaping the rise of the one world religion. It all started in, in February 4, 2019, during the Abu Dhabi uh, declaration. A joint declaration that signed signed by Pope Francis of the Catholic Church and Sheikh Ahmed El Shahab, the, the Grand Imam of Al Shazar, the spiritual center for Sunni Islam in Egypt. They signed a global peace treaty called the Document of Human Fraternity for World Peace. On September 14 and 15, 2022, Pope Francis took part in the Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions in Kazakhstan and the Palace of Peace uh, and Reconciliation. This Palace of Peace and Reconciliation uh, is a pyramid-shaped building, also translated as the Pyramid of Peace and Accord serves as a denominational national spiritual center and event venue. Pope Francis said during the meeting, we call on world leaders to abandon all aggressive and destructive rhetoric that leads to the destabilization of the world. That's scary, isn't it? Because there is only one path that leads us and that's Jeshua. According to scripture, and the Pope is calling on religious leaders to leave this behind. Remember when different people from different religions went to Mount Sinai to repent to Mother Earth. Not repent to the Father, but to repent to Mother Earth, the Greek goddess. On November 13, 2022, a group from the different religions went to Jebel Musa in Egypt which is the wrong Mount Sinai, by the way, to smash the two tablets of Yahweh and repent to Mother Earth. Pope Francis always talks about Mother Earth. The Earth is a she. She gives us food. She gives us water, which is pure paganism. But people will challenge the true believer. People will challenge us that we don't want peace by bringing all religions together. We live in a time when mainstream Christianity teaches grace without truth. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. The word of Yahweh cuts. It cuts away things in our hearts that don't belong there. Mixing, compromises, the truth always cuts. The truth makes us bleed in some way. The truth hurts from a world perspective, but it's what we need. It sets us free. The only way to survive the coming tribulation is to have a relationship with the Father, with the Holy Spirit, by knowing His word, knowing His voice and following Him instead of the world. We see compromise projects all over the world, such as, such as in Abu Dhabi. There's one in Germany, in Berlin, called the House of One which opened on June 14, uh, 2023. One in Omaha, Nebraska, United States, called Three Faith. A church, a synagogue and a mosque, an inter interface center and a bridge called Abraham, which connects the three major mono, uh, monothe monotheistic uh, religions in the world. According to the agenda of this One World Religion movement, it's all about to coexist. We see the coexist logo everywhere. On bumper stickers, on posters and in the media. The logo uses an Islamic crescent moon for the C, a peace sign for the O, and a combination of the male and female symbols for the E. 
a Star of David for the X and a pentagram for the point on the, on the I and a yin yang symbol for the S and a Christian cross for the T. People even talk about Abrahamic religions these days, which is a huge mistake. The Bible speaks of Abraham as the father of many nations, not religions. This term is a man-made invention that began with Louise Massignon, a French Catholic Islamic scholar, a pioneer of Catholic Muslim mutual understanding. It was an influential figure in the 20th century. Regarding the Catholic Church relationship with Islam and played a role in the acceptance of Islam uh, as an Abrahamic faith among Catholics. The concept of an Abrahamic religion only really came into use after 9-11. People began to realize that Muslim people, 1.4 billion people, also talk about Abraham. And, and Moses and David and Solomon, Ezra, Joshua, Jesus and so on. And that is why the Abrahamic religions, the father of religions as a term, started to become so popular. That's strange in a way. Because if you want to use the father of religions, it would be better to use Adam or Noah instead of Abraham, right? Anyway, another one of man's good ideas, but the father usually intervenes in man-made ideas. They unite and promote the Jewish, Muslim and Christian communities under Abraham as the father of the house because peace among great communities should be welcomed by us all. It actually started, all started with President Barack Obama during his first major trip abroad in 2009, where he went up to Al Ashar University and spoke with the, uh, about the unity between Islam and Christianity. The same university of, of Sheikh Ahmed El Shahab, spiritual center for Sunni Islam uh, in Egypt, with which uh, Pope Francis signed a contract. On the surface, Jeshua, Jeshua calls it a deception. How can you be against peace, right? But there's a hostile agenda behind it. Satan is playing his game on so many different boards and we believers, and this is what worries me, are jumping into with both feet. How does the Abrahamic house work out for the Temple Mount, for example, which is under the control of the Islamic authorities? The last place, the final battle that Daniel and Jeshua speaks of. Peace, peace, when there is no peace. But realize this, that in the last days, difficult times will come. Why? Because of deceit and apostasy. People will be deceived or fall away and discover that what we, what they believe is not true. Jesus warned us that false prophets are multiplying in the last days. And this is what we see happening all around us today. Have a blessed week. Shabbat Shalom. Oh,